Hello, my name is Sanem Bean and today I would like to take a look, a closer look at the dependency injection in Quarkus. And for this purpose, I will have to create a Quarkus project with dependency injection. So let's call it Earhex and the I for dependency injection. One resource, fine, path is fine. Switch to the I and then I would like to open an editor and take a look what happens behind the scenes. So um, we have hello resource, so end. I would like to delete the fully optional tests. So now they are deleted. So we would like to investigate dependency injection. So we will need something to inject. So let's create a class uh, hello Java. And uh, this is our class, fine. And I will need uh, two methods, a public one, and now call it init. And this is going to be injected with post construct and request scoped and here just have a output and this is hello init and then I will need a stack trace or I would like to see the stack trace and then another method and uh, this will return a string message and then return hey duke with another stack trace so thread dumb stack okay perfect so here we have the stack trace returns and here it's request scoped and now i would like to inject the class here at inject hello hello and just use the class and before we use the class what i would also like to to do is to actually see what it is get name and then just call it and then just call it um, hello dot message so we have now uh the stack trace should be visible here we have here stack trace initialized here here another stack trace and uh, now we just call call the uh, hello okay so now build a project and i would like to use the production build not the um, uh, quarkus colon dev mode and uh, i think it's faster if i go, go back to the terminal and just uh yeah we can build it here and then let's see okay and then here i would like to um curl localhost or actually um java minus jar run it here okay and curl it here perfect localhost um, 8080 hello so and we, what we see there's a hello client so the hello client so this is not the hello class is something called hello client proxy so let's take a look at the stack trace so what we see here um, in it we see a class called hello bin create which we um, didn't create it, so it was generated by client, and we also see the hello client proxy. So hello, hello bean, hello client proxy, and hello resource, hello resource, hello. So what we don't know is um, what happens actually at the creation time of the resource. So let's provide another stack trace, and what interests me now is here a method init resource, now call it differently, Post construct and um, hello resource dot init resource just to see the marker and then thread just dump the stack. Okay, so now just build it again. clean the screen, run it again, and now 
call it. And what we see is stack trace. We see that the hello resource also has a class called hello resource bean create. So the resource also there was even something generated for the resource, and the something was called hello resource bean create here. So now let's take a look what happens inside these generated classes. So how to do that? So I would like to open the uh, bytecode viewer. It's a great tool. So we have it. And um, what I also would like to do is to open here my finder. And in the target, there is a file called uh, snapshot runner. And I would like to take that. So what's wrong with the file? and drop it here and now take a look what happens so we have the air hacks and we find all the classes here so hello is our class so with the st uh, stack trace and we see the hello client proxy so was used what's interesting is the hello client proxy extends hello which is very what is uh, similar what usually happens in is a typical proxy pattern this is uh, how it should be and uh, what you also see the method uh, in the in the message method, uh, it tries you know to 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 find whether the bin exists or not. And um, and here in the arc delegate, there is the the whole scoping going on. So um, this hello resource at the initialization time is also interesting. So take a look on on that. And and by the way, we also have hello bin, and uh, this is the uh, the wrapper. And uh, what we see here that uh, the uh, hello proxy is created here and the bean is passed to the hello proxy and we also see here that the uh, in hello the hello was created the init method was called and then it was returned so this was the part of, from our stack trace so what's interesting is the hello resource so what we should see in the hello resource bean is here how the bean was created and what we see is the following so in the create method here we see that um, the hello was returned, and now hello resource dot hello was just was just set without any reflection. So what it means is um, the uh, dependency injection here is more or less hard coded without any reflection in place, and this is the explanation why it is actually so fast. So um, so what's funny is the similar approach happened uh, prior Java five or Java six where we had JDK 1.4, where the application servers were forced to generate uh, source code and compile the source code, so there was because there were no dynamic proxy. And uh, in the recently since JDK 1.4, or JDK 1.3, recently, 10 years, the application servers are uh, using uh, reflection, which makes it the, the, the dependency injection process a little bit slower. But Quarkus does not use reflection at runtime, and, uh, and therefore it, it comes with great dependency injection performance. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope I make it a little bit clearer and uh, something which is completely unrelated to dependency injection but still interesting um, is the following. So we have the manifest MF and what we see here is, this is the explanation um, how it actually works. We see here the, uh, the, the thin jar or skim jar which only contains the business logic with the reference to the entire Quarkus platform which is also great for cloud native and and and, and Docker um, or the cloud and um, on containerized deployments like for instance Docker, where the business logic and the infrastructure um, are are separated, strictly separated, because uh, you will only push the, the five classes and you don't have you know to repush the entire Quarkus over and over again. So thank you for watching. See you at upcoming conferences, virtual conferences or virtual workshops like AX.live, uh, AX.com uh, podcast or even projects. So thank you and bye.